interesting man. Now, I collect art, and I'm very proud of my art collection. I don't profess to know anything about art. I just know what I like. But I love sculptures. I love sculptures. And two of my favourite artists are Emma Rogers and Arthur Dooley. Arthur, of course, Liverpool lad, sadly passed away. And it was Arthur that I commissioned to build the first ever Beatle statue, which is in Matthew Street. That was mine. And I paid Arthur to do that many, many years ago. 74, I think it was, 1974. And it is photographed every single day, every single hour, every single minute for the tourists that come past. Emma Rogers... Uh, as you know, I went to Singapore last year and took some of her work with me uh, for the Best of British. And we, I think we raised £25,000 on one of her items, uh, which was a beautiful sculpture. A beautiful sculpture that she created for Singapore. So I love art. I love art. Uh, the other night, I went along to Leeds and um, to see and meet um, Al Pacino which is, to me, uh, the greatest living actor. And I've written about it in my column this week. So I haven't talked about it much because I've written about it. It comes out on Thursday in my column in the Liverpool Echo. But somebody there was larger than life, one of life's characters, but also a talent. I've never met him. I've never spoken to him. I just gave him my card. I asked him to come on my show because I just desperately wanted to talk to him. And we'll talk about his talent now. Marcus, uh, Marcus Levine. Hello, Marcus. Hello, Pete. How are you, mate? I'm all right, thank you. We're total strangers, but I had to give you my card because you impressed me. Oh, thank you. Absolutely impressed me. Now... Tell us who you are first before we talk about your work. So give us a give us a flavour of who Marcus is. A flavour of who Marcus is. Um, well, uh, family man, two daughters. Um, worked in a family business for many years. Uh, studied uh, art at uh, Jacob Kramer with Damien Hurst. Mm -hmm. uh, a very um, uh, well, a, a, a very interesting year. You know, it sort of opened your eyes. Um, we, all, we all went a bit mad in that year, uh, along with Damien. And, um, yeah, I suppose it, it sort of, uh, it was a um, sort of the, the start of my sort of creative process. I went on and did a four-year degree course, worked in television for a while, um, then went into the family business, which was probably a bit of a mistake. I think I should have gone and done what I wanted what to do. Which was to be a, a full-time artist straight away. Uh, so it was a lot harder to extrapolate myself from that and become a, a, a full-time artist in uh, my early 40s. In fact, it was my, my 40th year that I, I, I went full-time, really. Marcus, can you remember the first thing you ever created, ever? The first thing I ever created... Oh, do you know, I, I mean, I've kept all my drawing books yeah. From, yeah. from, I mean, you know, preschool. Uh, they're, they're all in a safe somewhere. Um, you know, so I, I, can, I can still sort of picture some of those drawings that I did. Um, but the first thing I ever created. Um, How old were you then when you first started? When you first had that, was it at school when you discovered that you wanted to go down this road? Yeah. Um, the, the first time I earned money out of my art was at school. Oh, um, really? Well, <laughs> well I, I couldn't, I mean, I just loved art and I couldn't understand all these kids that hated having to do art homework. Yeah. Um, so I used to charge them, I can't remember how much I charged yeah. that, I think it was like 50p yeah. to, to... Good on you. Yeah. And at the end of the year, I, I used to take in a barrage of different pens and I used to do them on the bus. So I'd do pencil for one guy and I'd do coloured pens for another because I thought, you know, I don't want the art teacher realising it's me. You know, they've all got to have their own styles. So, so I'd create styles for every one of them. And at the end of the year in my art report, Mr. Luckman wrote, Marcus's work would much improved if he stopped doing other people's homework. Uh, so they twigged. The style was there. They saw it. <laughs> Anybody who's just joined me, I'm talking to Marcus Levine, and he's a fascinating man. I haven't told you about his gift yet. We've, you're just getting the basis of who he is. Now, art is such a personal thing, as you know, Marcus, for everybody. And I still can't get my head around the, the Picasso, the price that it went for. Now, you're a businessman. Can you explain that? As a businessman who went into art, so you've, you've been incredibly successful. Mm -hmm. Now you're in the art world and you're incredibly successful, which we'll talk about. But can you explain the price? 
Um, I think it's the the people. Yeah, what you have to do is explain the people that are buying that work, mm -hmm. um, and it's it's to do with um, the rarity of the piece, and it's to do with the fact that they have enough money. Um, to have that piece of work and of course they're all bidding against each other yeah. so it's who finally has enough money to own it and that's what that's what it's about really it's so is the art not important then in a way well it is important but it's the name first of all i mean obviously picasso has yeah. a fantastic name i mean was a fantastic artist i mean you look at the i mean everybody sort of thinks of his his sort of um very very modern uh portraits which where the eyes and the, the, mm -hmm. the nose and the ears are all in the wrong place and it's very broad brush strokes but I mean the, the, the man was uh, fantastically uh, talented I mean he could paint um, uh, uh, very representational work so, so you know I think a lot of people look oh well, I could do that mm -hmm. but actually you can't you just can't you know people who think they can actually can't if they actually tried themselves yeah. um, and then you know you have the history of Picasso and then you have these people who have the money. It's a one-off that, you know, they're going to own something that's absolutely, well, it's priceless in a way. It's a part of history. And so then it's a battle of, of who can afford to buy it. And, 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 yeah. and that's how that... That's how the prices are. Right, I'm still not going to tell them what you did, because <laughs> it is quite unique. First of all, how did you get involved with meeting and doing what you did for um, Al Pacino? Um, it was a, a chance meeting with a chat. I'd, uh, for, for many years, I joked with sort of friends and family how wonderful it would be to do Vinnie Jones, because I always thought it, it would be, it, it'd be a great headline saying, Vinnie Jones, well, if I say the headline, then we obviously know what I do. Mm -hmm. do. Do you want me to say the headline or not? Yeah, say it, but it still won't tell anybody, really. Well, nailed it. Vinnie, Vinnie Jones is yeah. hard as nails. Oh, right, right. I was so, going to say nailed it, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. hard as nails. So, yeah, yeah. So, so, um... And, and I was just chatting to this chap, and he said, well, I, I know the Vinnie Jones managers. He says, I, I think they'd, they'd love that idea. Uh, and, of course, they did. So Vinnie was doing a tour around the UK, and they approached me and asked me if I'd do Vinnie Jones. And I said, well, yeah, of course I will. Like a fantastic opportunity. And then uh, a few weeks later, they rang me and said, well, actually, we're doing Al Pacino. Would you be interested in doing uh, a portrait of Al Pacino? Um, so that's how it that's how, that's it, came how it came about. Right. I've got to say, in all my years, and I'm older than you, I've been around, I, as I said at the beginning, I'm a very honest person, I don't know anything about art, I know what I like. It took my breath away, what you have done. Thank you have you. done it, and I've got a picture of it up now. You have done a picture of Al Pacino in nails. I don't know, even know how, where you would start. First of all, tell us where the idea came from. Um, well, it, it came out of that sort of heady mix of, of trying to look at new materials back in my youth, and I wanted to I wanted to create abstracts in nails, and it, it wasn't until years later that I. I um, I, I, I sort of matured enough to, to, to work it out technically in my head um, and so I, I was going to do this big abstract and uh, I'd, I'd sort of got as far as making the board and then all of a sudden I just thought you know if I could capture the human physique the human torso in nails the um, the contrast between the nails and the softness of the human form if I could capture that it would be absolutely fantastic so I went from abstract to figurative, and my wife posed for me, and uh, I slaved away for about three months. Um, Is that your wife, by the way, that amazing picture that's on the internet? I... With I, the dark hair uh, and the head back? No, that, no, that isn't. That's, uh, right. that's another model. But, right. um, my, my, my wife did about four, four, or, five, right. uh, four or five poses, and... Um, um, so that first one, um, I, I sort of brought down and uh, and, and sort of displayed and called, called my wife. I was a bit like Caracatus Potts, you know, yeah. locked away. I don't let anybody see what I'm doing whilst I'm working or something. Yeah. And uh, my wife came in and she looked and she said, I can't believe all that noise. She said, and I wondered what you were doing all those weeks and yeah. months. Yeah. 
And I said, well, it's you. She says, what do you mean it's me? I said, well, it's, it's you. Don't you remember? She says, she says, oh, well, I don't think anybody will recognise me, thank goodness. So I called the kids in who were quite young at the time, and my oldest daughter, I think she was about seven, turned around and said, that's mummy. And I thought, fantastic. Uh, she, Christina actually had her arm across her face, because there was two reasons. One, it, you couldn't tell it was Christina. Yeah. The second yeah. reason was because the, I thought the face might be quite difficult to do. <laughs> so she put her arm across her face. I didn't have to do her face. So, Marcus, do, yeah. you, do, do you do a draw? first and no. then work uh, tell us how it works well um if you can imagine if i put a line of nails in it takes me quite a, a time to put a line in i could draw it with a pencil but then all i'm doing is i'm, I'm reproducing the same action faster right in a way yep. so i just put a line of nails in uh, i rarely go wrong because it, it it takes me so long to do um with Al Pacino, I started, I mean, obviously I've moved on since those early days, yeah, yeah, yeah. and, I, and I've, I've got technically uh, better and better. Um, so I start with the eyes now, because um, Al Pacino, I mean, if you, if you look at that, that skull... I'm looking at it right now, I'm looking at it right now, and he, the eyes are coming straight at me, straight at me. He, he, uh, in my uh, humble opinion, he's almost saying... Um, uh, life is it's over for me it's almost not worth living you know he, he's, he's there he's, he's, he's surrounded by all this sumptuousness and yet he's he's almost soulless he's almost dead i don't know how he got that i mean that that still would have been taken whilst he was waiting to have the um to shoot the yeah. scene yeah. so somebody would have been in the in the background well in fact i, I spoke to the uh, by email to the photographer um to ask his permission and um um so that's, I just thought, I've got to get the eyes right, otherwise, you know, the next four weeks um, will be just wasted. You know, we're, we're on radio now, and people are listening mm. to what we're saying, and we've, we're the biggest radio show outside London, late night talk show, but they, they're not going to get this. They are not gonna, I'm looking at a picture of Al Pacino in nails. They have no idea, have they? It's hard to describe. It's very, it, well, it's, 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 I, I I think when you take a photograph of them now, people just they don't get it. Yeah. They look, and they just think, well, it's a very nice charcoal or a pencil <laughs> sketch. <laughs> And you go, no, he's done with nails. And they just, they don't, you know, it's sort of, it, some people do. I mean, yeah. you know, I've had clients who've never seen my work, who've ordered my work from places like uh, Beirut. And and it always amazes yeah. me they've taken that leap of faith. They've, they've yeah. had the, um, the, the, the imagination to understand. Is, I think even then people don't get into it. Isn't that amazing well, you mentioned Beirut? I mm. mentioned Emma Rogers at the beginning. Mm. Emma's a dear friend of mine, lives on the world. She's amazing. She's she does her, 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 excuse me, sir. Excuse me. Her signature piece is the dancing hers, and these two of them. And she's in Beirut all the time. Is she? I bet it's the same gallery. <laughs> it's a woman that runs a gallery. Uh, well, this was a private collector. Ah, right. At the time, he was yeah. he, he was a private collector, and he said, "I think I'm the first person who's ever heard of you in Beirut." Yeah. And then slowly but surely, you know, people began to uh, to, hit, to hear of me. Yeah. He says, "He come up, your name comes up in conversation." Now, you Shock know. everybody! How many nails is it? In that well i don't count them no I try not to um but there's always this thing at the end where i think oh and i work out roughly yeah. and uh, there was over two hundred thousand nails it might have been three hundred thousand but there was there was definitely over two hundred thousand nails in it here's an interesting question how are your hands when you have to work on this because as you do more and more work is it going to be is it difficult or not it is. Um, I, I, the, the, Al, the, the Al Pacino was, was, was extraordinarily difficult because by the time I'd negotiated the, the license fees for the image and things like that, which a lot of artists don't do, they just go, oh, well, I'll just pinch that off the internet. But I, I don't do that. You know, that's, that's, you know the, the, a photographer has spent his time, he's got on the set, he's taken the photo, and he's due his royalties. Um, so I always... Uh, you know, I always negotiate that before I start. And um, when I started, I got three days in and I came in and I just said to Christine, I said, I won't finish this by the 16th. I'm, I'm going to have to work very long hours. And yeah. I, I just, I, I started working and uh, I was, I was, uh, in the end, I was, because I was getting tired in the evening, I was working through till 11, 12 o'clock. I realized that if I ate a smaller meal in the evening, 
I could last longer then at night. And yeah. so it's, it's been good for my diet because I've just eaten less and I haven't been able to drink at all. How me. frustrating is doing something like this as a piece? When does it start coming? Uh, you've got the idea in your head. When does it start coming to life? After the eyes. If I've got the eyes right, everything else will follow. And then, um, the, the you know, the chair, the leather chair, that was the thing that took, that was lifeless. I, I hated it. I, I cursed it every day because it just took so long to put that many nails in. Yeah. I knew it before I started, but I just wanted to do that particular <laughs> image. I mean, the that chair is an iconic, you know, Tony Montana. As it's important to the picture as the picture. Yeah, yeah. it is. Yeah, you could have. I could have just done a portrait and made it life simple for myself, just his face. But yeah. I wanted the whole thing. I wanted the cherub at the top of the chair. So, so I did. I, I, I it's, it, you know, everybody has to climb their one mountain, and that was my mountain. I mean, I, you know, as I, I say, never again, but yeah. I probably will do it again. How did Al Pacino react to it? Um, well, you know, he comes in and he's, he, he's into the green room and he's got one or two things he has to sign, like the guns and the the uh, the, the, the prints and things. I must point out, ladies and gentlemen, the guns are two replica guns which were auctioned. And by the way, it was all for charity. Carry on. Right. Um, uh, so so he, he, I knew he'd sign the guns first and I thought, if I'm not careful, he'll be in let's get out of here as quickly as possible yeah, mode yeah. so he, he came forward and I handed him my pen and I said Al please will you will you stand back and just take a look at my sculpture so he stood back and I said look this is done with nails and he went he went wow so I said uh, he's taken me uh, and he said move forwards and I said look just sign it here and actually date it for me so he signed it and he dated it and then he stood back again I said look this will take me over four weeks so he says it's amazing I said would you would you mind posing and shaking my hand, you know, in front of the sculpture, which he, he did. And then he walked back to the sculpture and he stroked the nails with his hands. So I thought, yeah, you're human after all, because everybody wants to touch the nails. Uh, I just thought it was a nice... A nice Is thing. that a fact? They, that's the first thing they've got to do? Everybody wants to Isn't touch the nails. Isn't that weird? Yeah, in a, in a big, in a big like, yeah. like when it was it was in the Champagne Marquis, I, I had to put a notice up and say, please don't yeah. touch, because yeah. if you're not careful, you end up with a lot of paw prints. Not on the, the nails, but on the, on the, on the white, um, what the white. Is the white. What is the white on the nails? You know, the different light and shade. How, 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 how's that done? That's just the that burnishing. Painting? That's the burnishing from the nails. Right. Um, you know, when you hit them with the hammer, you're actually uh, polishing them slightly. And, um, so, so in different lights, you get different texture. Marcus, is anybody doing this apart from you? No, I am the, I, I've created this art form um, and I've checked all over the world. Yeah. Um, wow. So I know people are going to start copying me. It's, 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 it's very it's flattering. Uh, it's, it's just what I was going to say. Yeah. It's very flattering. Yeah. Um, I've got to say, ladies and gentlemen, by the way, uh, this was for charity. This man donated this for charity and raised 40, if I remember rightly, 42,000 pounds. That's right. Which I did get my expenses, you know. Yeah, well, I should yeah. bloody well hope so for the nails, <laughs> <laughs> if nothing else. <laughs> but no, it, it was great. How do you feel sitting in a room with a thousand plus people when people are bidding on it? Tell me then how you feel about that as an artist watching your piece. I hate it. Um, it's the worst bit. The, the best is obviously when you're there and people are asking you questions and wanting to uh, stand and have the photo taken with the sculpture. That's very, very flattering. And yeah. you know, I mean, artists are sort of hermits. Most, I mean, you know, I've spent the last five months working, and I've produced four sculptures in five months, and that's non-stop. And obviously, yeah. the Al Pacino included all the weekends. Um, so you come out, you know, and this is your big sort of day. It's your chance to uh, to enjoy yourself. I mean, I never really enjoy myself because I'm always sort of concerned about the handling. And yeah. I mean, as you saw, it's very heavy. It took three guys to carry it out. Yeah. Um, um, so, so you're always a, a, a sort of a bit worried, and I don't drink, you know, obviously at these events you can't, um, uh, but the actual auction itself, it, if you remember, it sort of, it, it went very quickly up to 10,000, Yeah. and then for a moment there was a pause. Yes, there was a pause, very clever, because don't forget, let's face it, we're not being stupid, Marcus, you were, once again, I'll say it again, you were a businessman, you know there's people there want to buy that, you know there's people playing games. <laughs> Yeah. They play well, that game so I do so many auctions as a host and you see and
and you know they're playing that game. They're just sat there waiting. Yeah. You know? I mean, the, 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 the bidders that finally came in at the end when it hit 20 grand, they didn't come in until it hit 20 grand. Yeah. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, oof, off it went. Um, but the, 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 the guy that, that was bidding from word go was determined to, uh, determined to have it. Um, and he got it. Tell me, please, about the big piece in the... Is it a shopping centre you've got? A, a huge piece. Um, that was commissioned by the uh, British... Uh, science Association. I was I was very surprised when they rang me because obviously it's a, it's a science. Um, they go to different cities each year and they put on a big science um, science show and there's lots of uh, speakers. Let me let me just interrupt you a minute. I'm sorry to be rude, but I, I want to do it on purpose. Uh, we've put that picture up. So right now, if you go to City Talks uh, website, City Talks Facebook, City Talks Twitter, or Pete City Price, you'll see the gentleman I'm talking to. You'll see our but more important, you'll see the work, and you will not believe that is nails. Look at it now. City Talks website, City Talks Facebook, City Talks Twitter, Pete City Price. Sorry, I interrupted you. Go on. That's right. Um, so th they came on to me and said, uh, you know, we we've seen your uh, work with century sculptures, which are all about the smells of fresh wood. The the I, I sometimes I wax polish with a scented wax and I put nails in and um, I've got sort of visually impaired um, art clubs that now they, when I'm exhibiting I like to come and I always allow them to touch the work without gloves on which mm -hmm. is um, you know because a lot of the public galleries they don't like you to touch the work yeah, yeah. without yeah. gloves yeah. supervised but they, they could touch and, and uh, so they, 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 they asked me if I would do a, um, a, a talk at the science fair about that and I said well I don't normally you know I don't normally do talks well we'll commission you to do a sculpture that's fantastic Yes, I'd be delighted to do a talk. You know, <laughs> anything, anything to get a, a sculpture made. Yeah. Um, and so I, I, I went to the um, went to my uh, local. Um, um, uh, um, the wood uh, where, where, where they, they, they Timmy Yard the Timmy Yard yeah. and uh, I picked out a nice piece of oak it was four metres long had it delivered to a friend of mine uh, who had a big factory with a full truck and I carved it out of a solid piece of oak uh, I carved it down to about 3.3 metres and uh, then finished it off with the, with the nails which yeah. uh, for me is all about the organic quality of what I'm working with and the nails are like um, they're almost like a, a lichen or a moss creep, creeping out from the centre of where I start to do it. Yeah. And it's, it's on permanent exhibit at the University of Bradford. It's outside their um, big atrium. Mm. And I occasionally I move it and exhibit it and uh, it goes back there to, to for sort of uh, exhibition and then I, I sort of, I moved it into the uh, into Leeds Light in Leeds for the Light Night, which is Leeds' big um, sort of art once a year. It's a sort of a thing single night and yeah. uh, I moved two big sculptures in and I don't really think um the, the, the people at the light understood exactly what it was that I was bringing into there. Because when it's lying down on its side, yeah. it's, it's, it's huge. <laughs> but you say about not understanding, but isn't that what art's about? I, I, we're in the tower in Liverpool, and I look over to my right, and we've got the Walker Art Gallery, we've got all that. I look to my left, down there by the docks, we've got uh, um, the Tate, the uh, Tate, Tate yeah. Modern. We've got so much wealth here, but I love to see ordinary people like myself going into an art gallery and having a conversation about a piece. Surely that's what it's about. It is. Uh, I mean, I, I just love to, because uh, people don't know me, I can, I can pretty much sit um, at the coffee shop by the side of my sculpture and watch people's reactions to it. And it's great. You get a lot of people who are on the mobile phones and they, they don't see it. Literally 3.3 metres of oak and they can't see it and they just walk straight past it. And then you get people who literally, if there was a post, a lamppost, and they walked into it, their necks turn 45 degrees 
you just to see it. They never stop walking, but they just stare at it as they're walking. And others go up to it and they want to touch it and, you know, they stand there and have a conversation. That's, that, you know, that's great to watch. The people watch, but in a very specific way. It's very difficult in the art world, as you know. You've got to have somebody that uh, believes in your work and all of a sudden it will happen and uh, you know many people. And I've, I've got to ask this question because right now, listening, there will be many people that will be frustrated and angry because they can't get their work seen, they can't get... What advice would you give to anybody? And I normally say to young people, but it's not. It's people right across the board. There will be frustrated artists, sculptors out there now. What advice would you give to them? Hmm. Um, well, I would say that uh, the work comes first. And you don't listen to your family and your friends, because they'll always tell you it's wonderful. <laughs> it's got to be, it, it's got to be strangers that tell you your art is wonderful. And really, deep down inside, you know yourself how good your work is. And if you really know that and feel that, then that's the, that's the start, and that's where your determination should come from. And then it's just a case of spending a little bit of time, because to forget a website, a website will not wonderfully uh, um, advertise your work, because it'll just be lost in a sea of websites. Mm -hmm. You have to physically yourself knock on doors and open doors, and for every door you knock on, a, d a door will be slammed in your face, and you can't, you have to be thick-skinned, you just have to keep going. Do you know, Marcus, I am so, I knew you'd be like this, this is why I came up and said hello to you, <laughs> because I, 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 I'm a stand-up comic, I'm a broadcaster, I do panto every year, it's exactly the same, nobody's got me my work, I've knocked on doors, exactly the same as what you're saying, Emma Rogers creates situations, Arthur Dooley, who sadly passed away, tremendous sculptor in Liverpool, created his own work and created you, you've got to haven't you you can't sit back anymore no no you can't it's it's it, there's there's two sides to to art you know you have to be prepared to represent yourself i mean obviously i've got representation of course now, yeah but but you, in the early days there's nobody else doing it for you it's yeah. you, you've got to do it yourself and you've got to have absolute belief in yourself yeah. and, and that that belief has got to come, you know, you've, just, you've got to know that you are doing the right thing when you're creating your work. You know? So what's your next piece? Uh, my next piece is actually um, another sculpture of Dominic North. Um, Dominic North is um, a principal ballet a dancer for Matthew Bourne Ballet Company right. and he came to visit me in November uh, Northern Lad uh, close to me actually Shipley um, and just just such an just uh, just such a relaxed guy not um, not a prima donna at all um I actually thought he was going to jump out of the, uh, out of the studio. He could jump so high. Um, and I, I'd, I'd, I'd scribbled all these poses down. And some of them, I really wondered how you, you, could, you could do that pose in, yeah. in the air. And he looked at me and went, yeah, I think I know how to do that. And then he'd go onto the, onto, the, um, um, uh, onto the studio floor and do it. And um, so I've got some wonderful work. Um, and of course, all the time you're thinking, you know, well, what's a little bit different? And so one of the things that I've done is I've captured his feet. Because ballet dancers' feet take such a hammering, excuse me. Oh, I know, and they look, <laughs> yeah. some of them look dreadful. They look dreadful. absolutely dreadful, yeah. So, so yes, yeah, so, so I wanted, I wanted his feet, and, uh, but the, I'm, I'm doing a big one. It'll be five yeah. foot by five foot. Um, I, li I lifted the board onto the easel today. Um, it's a two-man lift. You can't. Yes, the, the boards are very heavy, and I will probably start that tomorrow or the day after. And do people stand these pieces, or do they have them put on the wall? Or they, they have them. As well? Yeah, they have them put on the wall. They have them uh, put on the wall. Yeah, because they really are heavy, aren't they? They are. Yeah. yeah. Well, I I think it's fascinating. I just think I just love art, and I love something different. And it really did take my breath away. I checked out uh, on the internet and everybody should go onto the internet and have a look for Marcus and have a look at his work and we have put that picture up. I'm so glad you, you came on the programme. I really wanted to do this. It's not often I just go to a strange man and give him my card even though I'm gay. <laughs> 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 Marcus, thank you so much for joining me. Oh, Pete, it's been a pleasure. Thank bye you so bye. much. Okay, bye. Bye bye. What a nice man. Marcus uh, Levine there, and just check his workout. Promise you, it's so unique. Let's take a break. City Talk. Talk.